Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 27th of September. Our main story for you. Banks and building societies have withdrawn some of their mortgage deals because of the volatility on global markets. Yes, interest rates are expected to rise significantly over the coming months, with some analysts predicting they could edge up towards 6% next year. Vincent McAvinney reports. A volatile start to the week for the pound and the UK. The early morning plunge yesterday in sterling's value to unprecedented depths against the dollar impacts petrol, food prices, mortgage costs and the wider economy. What are you going to do about the turmoil on the markets this morning, sir? The Chancellor remained tight-lipped. I'm not going to make any comment now. Thank you. But it was his mini-budget and subsequent comments over the weekend about going further with tax cuts and borrowing, which had spooked international markets' confidence in Liz Truss's new government. The problem is that nobody knows whether we can afford it or not. And so the market is pricing in the possibility uh, that this is a big you know, experiment that may backfire. To give you a sense of how dramatic a fall the pound has taken, in 2007, before the financial crisis, it was on average $2 to a pound. But yesterday it had tumbled to almost $1 to one pound parity. There's been troubling developments in other parts of the market. The effective cost of borrowing for the government is surging. To borrow over two years now costs over 4.5% in interest, up from under 2% in August. That is now notably higher to lending rates to former crisis countries like Italy and Greece. When these rates go up, so do borrowing costs for corporations. Retailers' costs have surged, increasing shopping bills, and so have the costs of new mortgages. Virgin Money and Skipton Building Society have halted mortgage offers for new customers. Meanwhile, Halifax said it had stopped mortgages with product fees. This is a concern for people like new dad Aaron, whose fixed-term mortgage is coming to an end, just as his wife is on maternity leave and the cost of living continues to rise. Naturally, with other costs rising in terms of energy and, and, and other bills, um, it's going to certainly, you know, put us at quite a, a little bit lost, more of a deficit. Um, I guess I'm, I'm picking up the entirety uh, of the mortgage costs as well. So, yeah, quite a, quite a lot of pressure and a, and, a, and a big hit. The Treasury tried to regain the confidence of spooked markets by announcing that more of the details and forecasts will be published towards the end of November. Meanwhile, the Bank of England said it would not hesitate to raise interest rates if necessary and would make a decision on any action in November. With the economic fallout far from over, it's shaping up to be a difficult winter for British families and businesses. Vincent McAvinney, BBC News. Well, let's go straight to Ben now, who was at the Bank of England for us this morning. Morning, Ben. And I know you're standing in front of that you know, the very famous building and the decisions that are made there, the people behind there, will make decisions that will affect everybody's bank statements, bank balances. So it's going to be watched very closely. Yes, you're absolutely right, Sally. The decisions made in there will have an impact on households right around the UK. It is, of course, uh, the Bank of England. And why is that decision that they make on interest rates so important? Well, let me talk you through it. Because around this time yesterday, we saw a big fall in the value of the pound against the dollar. At one point, it hit a record low, down to $1.03 for every pound and it has recovered since but it brings with it a huge amount of uncertainty take a look at this graph you can see just how much the value of the pound has been fluctuating and the rate of the fall in the value of the pound has increased since friday of course friday is when the chancellor announced big tax cuts in an effort to try and boost the economy paid for by increased borrowing but that spooked investors and their confidence in the uk and therefore the pound dropped. That is why the pound lost value. And a low pound has an impact on all of us. It means that things cost more to import when they're priced in dollars. So that's things like oil, gas, food, raw materials. Ultimately, it could mean higher prices, even higher than they are already, being passed on to us for the goods and services that we buy. Now, the Bank of England there tried to calm the situation down yesterday by saying it would not hesitate to raise interest rates. 
as much as was necessary. Of course, raising interest rates pushes up the cost of borrowing. It makes mortgages and loans more expensive. So why would they do that when people are going through a cost of living crisis? Well, because they need to try and rein in inflation. You raise interest rates, the logic goes, you bring down the rate at which average prices are going up. There's speculation there could be an emergency rise announced by the Bank of England in the coming weeks, possibly even the coming days, to try and tackle inflation, which is already at a 40-year high. Average prices almost 10% higher than they were a year ago. And that was before the pound's value fell so sharply. For its part, the government has given an update. The Treasury said it will give more detail on its economic plans in November. But, you know, the impact is already being felt. If you look at the Halifax, the Skipton, the Virgin Money, mortgage providers, they've already put a temporary halt on giving some new mortgage products. What does that mean? That it's harder to get a deal, especially if you're a first-time buyer. And if you already have a mortgage, well, I'm afraid it's not good news either. Let's say, for example, rates climb to 6%, which some traders are expecting could happen early next year. If you have £200,000, say, of debt on your house still to pay off and you're coming off a two-year fixed deal, that means your repayments would rise by £600 a month. Now, I don't know about you, Sally and John, but there are not many people that I've spoken to who could weather a £600 mortgage increase each month. It's staggering, isn't it, Ben? Thank you very much. Go on this as well because our top story this morning is that analysts are warning that interest rates could hit 6% by next spring as the market and the pound continue to react to the Chancellor's promise of huge tax cuts. Ben is at the Bank of England for us this morning. Uh, morning, Ben. And that's where the decisions are going to be made that will affect lots and lots of people watching this morning. Yes, you're absolutely right. In there, the experts will be scratching their heads trying to figure out how quickly to raise interest rates and when, if to raise interest rates, to try and deal with the cost of living pressures that we're all facing. And it is now connected to the fall in the value of the pound. It touched a record low briefly on Monday morning against the dollar. It was down at $1.03. That's almost parity. Parity, of course, when one pound would get you one dollar. But what does all of this mean for you. Let me explain, because we know that prices rocketed, didn't they, after the war in Ukraine began. This fall in the value of the pound is just going to increase the price of goods and services that we import even more. And that leaves a very difficult decision for firms to make. Do they pass those extra costs on to their customers? Because businesses are facing higher energy bills, for example, but so are their customers. If they put prices up, people may simply not be able to afford to buy their products. It's something that we've been speaking to David about. He runs a chain of restaurants in Manchester and London. The items on here, which we get mainly from Southeast Asia, uh, are anchored on the price of the dollar. So the lower our currency is to the dollar, the higher these products are going to cost us. And then the items down here, which are our fresh items, uh, especially as we move into winter, will be reliant on the price of the euro. Uh, which I understand is at a two-year low. The red peppers, uh, I'm being quoted, about 15 to 20% increase. The basket of all my fresh vegetables going into winter is going up about 14%, which has never happened in my 25 years of business. Things like coconut milk, uh, over the last six months, that's gone up about 20%. That'll be an element of currency, but an element of supply chain as well. Uh, but currency is just another wave of keeping those prices up. Most hospitality businesses operate on very tight margins. If you're doing very well, you're making 10p in the pound. Uh, if you're losing 3, 4, 5% of that just on your food and drink costs, then you layer in utility costs where um, even with the government support, you're paying three times more than you were paying a few years ago. Uh, plus all the other inflationary pressures, it makes it tough times. And uh, you know, I believe there already has been and will be more closures coming. Now, oil is another commodity that is priced in dollars, so the fall in the value of the pound could make petrol and diesel more expensive. The actual price of oil has fallen in recent weeks, but drivers are not likely to see that being reflected at the pump because of this fall in the value of the pound. 
Now, there are some advantages to a weak pound. It benefits companies that export from the UK. It means that it's less expensive for people in other countries around the world to buy goods and services from British firms. It makes them more competitive. But the big worry around all of this is the impact it'll have on mortgages. We know that some lenders, Halifax, Skipt and Virgin Money, have withdrawn some of their products, particularly for first-time buyers. And uh, it's thought that something like two million people in the UK who are on tracker or variable rate mortgages could see their monthly costs go up and go up quite sharply. Let me give you an illustration. Um, if rates, interest rates at the Bank of England went up to 6% early next year, someone with £200,000 left to pay off on their mortgage, £200,000 of housing debt, coming off a two-year fixed rate deal, their monthly repayments could go up by £600 every month. Now, I, I don't know about you, Sally and John, but people I've been speaking to, there are very few, if any, who could withstand a £600 increase in their monthly mortgage payments, hence the worry around all of this. Numbers very worrying indeed, Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's go straight to the Bank of England. Ben is there for us this morning. And Ben, in the building behind you, some important decisions being discussed. Yes, some important decisions that will affect all of us wherever we are in the UK. Around this time yesterday, we saw a big fall in the value of the pound against the dollar. It hit a record low of about $1.03. It has since recovered. Take a look at this graph. It's currently at about $1.08 to every pound. But even so, there's been a sharp fall in the value of the pound since Friday when the Chancellor announced big tax cuts to boost the economy, funded by increased borrowing. That spooked investors, their confidence in the UK fell, and so did the value of the pound. And that low value of the pound affects all of us. It means that it costs more to buy, to import commodities that are priced in dollars. That's things like oil, gas, food, raw materials, and it could mean even higher prices than we're already seeing for the things that we all buy. Now, the Bank of England, in there, tried to calm the situation yesterday, saying that it would not hesitate to raise interest rates as much as necessary. Now, of course, that t does tend to rein in inflation, but it also makes borrowing more expensive. The government said, for its part, it will give an update on economic plans in November. But the reality is the impact is already being seen. The Halifax, Skipton, Virgin Money lenders have all put a temporary halt on some of their new mortgage products. That means if you're a potential first-time buyer, it'll be much harder to get a deal. And if you already have a mortgage, just look at some of the figures. If the Bank of England puts the interest rate up to 6%, as many traders are expecting it could do early next year, if you've got £200,000 left to pay off on your mortgage, you're coming off a two-year fixed deal, your mortgage could jump the repayments by £600 a month. That's an extra £600 a month to find just to pay for your mortgage. And people I've spoken to, not many have that extra kind of cash just lying around. Indeed. Ben, thanks very much. Uh, let's take one last look at this morning's news headlines, shall we? Banks and building societies have withdrawn some of their mortgage deals because of the volatility on global markets. And interest rates are now expected to rise significantly over the coming months, with some analysts predicting they could edge up towards 6% next year. Well, Ben is at the Bank of England for us this morning. And Ben, even reading these headlines, it's scary times for anyone trying to get a mortgage, buy or sell a house. Yes, it really is. And it's got the experts in there in the Bank of England scratching their heads, wondering what exactly to do about it. Because yesterday we saw a big fall in the value of the pound uh, in relation to the dollar. It hit a record low of $1.03. It has since recovered this morning. It's at about $1.08. But we saw that big fall since Friday when the Chancellor announced big tax cuts to try and boost the economy, funded by a big increase in borrowing. That spooked investors, their confidence in the UK dropped, and that is why the value of the pound dropped. How does it affect us? Well, a low pound makes it more expensive to import commodities. So that's things like oil, gas, food, raw materials, and so it could push prices up for the things that we all buy even more than we've seen them rise already. The Bank of England in there tried to calm the situation yesterday, saying it would not hesitate to raise interest rates as much as necessary. 
The government, for its part, said it will update the economic plans in November. But the impact's already being felt. The Halifax, Skipton and Virgin Money have all withdrawn some of their products for mortgages. That means it's harder to get a deal if you're a first-time buyer. Uh, and also, if you've already got a mortgage, your mortgage repayments could jump. Let me explain. If the rates by the Bank of England, the base rate goes up to 6%, which many are expecting it could do next year, £200,000 left on your mortgage to pay off, you come off a two-year fixed rate, your repayments could rise by as much as £600 a month. That is an incredibly big jump for many people who are feeling the cost of living pressures in so many other ways as well. And then we are also hearing, aren't we, that Ofgem has released a statement calling on energy providers to do more to support customers who are struggling to pay their bills. Yes, it does this review, Ofgem is the energy regulator, it does this review of how energy suppliers are dealing with customers who say they're having trouble making repayments. Only one of the major suppliers was found to have no issues at all. Most were found to have some moderate weaknesses in their processes. But three were found to have severe weaknesses in the way they dealt with people who told them they were struggling to pay their bills. And in fact, two of the suppliers, Utilita and Scottish Power, have been given enforcement notices requiring them to make immediate improvements. And the chief executive of Ofgem said that going into this tough winter, it is critical that energy companies prioritise the needs of vulnerable customers struggling to pay bills. Some suppliers have fallen short of the standards that Ofgem expects. The needs of vulnerable customers must be at the top of their priorities. Ben, thank you. That's Ben Boulos, live at the Bank of England.